you're saying so, Juju bounces back? Is that? The, I mean, I guess. What is your? Th- I put it like this. When I look at it like this, when I read the article, I definitely can see both sides. I can see the injury element of it, the quarterback play, especially the accuracy that went down from Ben to Mason and then from Mason to Duck. I could definitely see all that. But then at the same time, I can see the part of the argument where they're like, did he benefit solely because of AB and what he was doing in terms of coverages that he was drawing away? And we've talked about that as well. So I think in both of those regards, I mean, I think there's some truth in both of those statements. Yep. It's usually what it is, right? We... In society, we always want to be completely right, completely left. Mm-hmm. Answers typically in the middle. Yeah. So, I mean, you have one side of it that's because up to this point, are we really saying that Juju has had that number one receiver impact? Right. We don't know. We don't know because you have one side of it that people are like, "Oh, the quarterback play was garbage," mm-hmm. and you know he's going to bounce back. He's going to really show that he's going to be the yeah, the, the true number one. Because yeah. the knock against that is, if you look back. I'm trying to think how many games has he had without a B one game, the Bengals game yeah. back in week 17. And that, and it wasn't, he best. had, I, yeah. I've looked it up right it here. He had best. five receptions for 37 yards and a yeah. touchdown and the offense didn't look that crazy. Yeah. I mean, we won the game. I think we right. all thought we were going to the, win the game, yeah. although it was kind of tight. It was. Yeah. Um. So there's that. And then if you look back yeah, at, that was the year when uh the Browns threw the pick. Uh, it was Baker. It was yeah, Baker, Baker versus Lamar. Pick, yeah. We needed uh, the, the Browns to win. We needed them Browns to win. Browns were driving didn't. through the pick at the end. Yep. Everybody said at the stadium. I remember that. Yeah. Yep. So that was. The, I think that's the one game I can really think of where yeah. it's with, he was without AB. AB has always been there. So yeah. you have that type of performance, and I'm thinking of other games without Juju where we haven't had AB and we've had Martavis, and the outcome has been different. Yeah. Having Martavis out there than Juju, and I think we can all say Martavis would have been a number one on his own without AB. Very true. So we just haven't really seen it, but the one game that we have a really small sample size, and this goes into what we were saying, you could see the other side of it. We just haven't had that much of a, a sample without AB, and then last year there was all this crap that was happening. Yeah. Well, because I even think back, I said um, in terms of the sample size, I really look at just two games for Juju. I look at that Bengals game we just talked about, and I look at the opener versus the Patriots because that would have been his only yeah. other opportunity to prove that he's a number one with Big Ben at quarterback. Ben's well. elbow was a little hurt. Oh, boy, so y'all got to stop this. Man. <laughs> like, <laughs> just trying to look out for Juju here. Y'all got to stop this. <laughs> all right. So, all right. But those so are the two we'll, games. We'll say I those two at. games then. And, and yeah, they weren't the best. <laughs> And I do think that that did raise some concern, but I don't, uh, this is my thing. It's hard to just pass judgment on Juju off of two games, because I think that when you look at his overall body of work, that productivity, I mean, that's crazy, regardless of who's been on the other side of you, regardless of that, because it's like, man, the numbers that he was putting up from a catching standpoint and from a receiving yard standpoint, I don't care how much attention that guy on the other side is drawing. You still have to be holding your own. You still have to be excelling. And I think that portion for me still is why I lean more towards the side of I think that he can be more like year one and year two versus year three. Now, I don't think it's going to be to the same level of year one and year two in terms of the catches and yards. But I think it's more in that vein, more in that realm than what we saw last year. If that makes sense, you know what I mean? No, nah, definitely. Now, year one and year two was just kind of different. Him, I think in terms of numbers, yeah. what do you have year one? We talked about this, 970, 970 yards, yards, but that was different. Mm-hmm. He was more like the third wheel mm-hmm. with Martavis and AB, yeah. but this, he's going to be number one. So maybe the production is maybe a little more similar. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's the average between those two years, yeah. but it's going to look a little different than that Correct. year one probably, in my opinion. Now, I wonder, this is a interesting thought that I had interesting maybe just because it is my own thought i don't Jeez. you could judge Geeks it thoughts you could judge it if it's <laughs> interesting or not it. but anyway are we knocking juju or the hate for juju do you think it comes from the ravens fumble and the jets drop and like the, if those and the saints fumble yeah i'm just thinking more yeah. of last year though oh, in terms okay, okay. of and, i think like all of that yeah, I agree. Because the Saints fumble, he still had a really good year. Yeah. I think a lot of people at that point were thinking, uh, we'll, we'll give him that. That's mm-hmm. That was one one bad play. He still yeah. had 111 receptions in this crazy Pro Bowl type mm-hmm. of season. Whereas last year, he was 
uh, up and down, helter yeah. skelter. But then you combine the Ravens fumble and you combine yeah. the Jets drop. Is that what we're really judging him on, as opposed to the down year? Because I'm thinking that yeah. more and more. Like if let's let's say let's even take away the Jets one. If the Ra- it was just the Ravens mm-hmm. fumble, and he catches that Jets pass. Yeah. Are we, I mean, is it as bad? I think that Jets See, pass I left think, a bad taste in I our mouth. I think this is the thing. It's a combination of that, but also the the side narrative of does he love football or does he the want video to games yeah, do the video game, the branding and all that type of stuff. I think that whole combination and then you factor in the memories that we all have of AB where his was just maniac work. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to go crazy in this work in this football thing. Like this is all I obsess over. This is all I care about. That's all we saw with AB. So that's what we all conditioned our minds for in terms of what a number one receiver looks like on and off the field. Whereas with Juju, he was a totally different dynamic in that. He was having success, but then at the same time, we're showing you that, Hey man, I want to have fun. I want to dance. I want to play video games. This is what I love to do. And I think Early on, it was fun because of the success, but then the first time you start seeing adversity season not going the way that we are accustomed to, well, now you look at things to point to. <laughs> and I think that's how it is. I think about this, right? It's funny, you, you, yeah. you can have success, and then it's like, okay, yeah, show us a little bit more of your personality. Show us what you do off the field. As soon as you start <laughs> playing bad, what do we all say? You need to focus on football. How many times have we seen on social media a guy loses in a game, if he tweets out anything that he's at a, a party, if he's going out to dinner on Monday, Tuesday, no, nah, you need to be focused on more. You need to get back to football. You need to be in the playbook. Like people aren't allowed to express themselves. And I think because of Juju's being so out and open with his personality, with his personal life, that people take shots at that because they're like, hey man, you didn't you didn't produce to our liking. So you're not allowed to do anything else. All you're supposed to do is just focus on football and football only. If you do anything other than that, well, you don't love the game the same way. You don't care about it the same way. Personally, I think that's the most yeah, it's just garbage. Garbage it's, thought process. I can't stand it. But that's the perception that people have about Juju in that regard. So when you see him fumble a ball, but then a day later he's, you know, playing the game or he's out at a party drinking or not even drinking, just dancing, people view it like, yo, you don't care. You're not as invested. Whereas when we saw with AB, if AB had a bad game, man, you're seeing this dude, what? Working out the next day. Working out on top of that workout. Then he's working on top of the workout. Then he just got done doing a workout. Like, and he's just like, yo, this dude, all he does is work out. Like, it's crazy. He doesn't yeah. eat. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't talk to nobody. He just works out. And people love that though, and I think that's the thing that hurts Juju in this regard right now. Yeah, that's that is funny though. Whenever you talk about the whole work thing, if you're not doing something you love, <laughs> are you working that hard? <clears throat> Man, I'm not saying Juju doesn't right, love right. it, but I'm just saying it, it's almost like double standard. Mm-hmm. If I'm working at X office downtown, yeah. <laughs> and I get off my shift, I can yeah. work hard throughout the shift. If I'm if I'm not like in love, sure, love, you can love. even go do some extra work when you get home for an hour, hour, two hours. You can do a little extra. You're not obsessing over that thing. Twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Though. And that's the thing. This is the point I want to bring up. We're comparing certain players, really good players, who, mm. like we said, I have no question that Juju really loves the game. Right. I have no question that a lot of these players love the game. I mean, everyone's got different personalities, right. but still, if you're if you're doing that, you're putting the work. I, I mean, I have no reason to think that you don't love it. I, I you know, there's no other evidence otherwise. Right. Anyway, we're comparing these players to A. B. Brady, Brady, like certain just people that are on right. different levels with this stuff, and that's I don't I think that's kind of unfair. Yeah, I agree, man. I think it's more than one way to show your love for the game. It's more than one way to get the job done. Everybody thinks it has to just be this way. Right. Or it has to just be Yeah, everyone's that got way. their own thing. Yeah, like, and that's just in life in general, man. You can be successful. People, are, there's plenty of successful people that have went about that success totally different ways. That's just how it is. And I look at, when I look at Juju, it's the same concept. I look at a guy, man, he's a hard worker. Absolutely. I can vouch for it. I've seen it firsthand. I know he's going to put the work in. Is he going to have fun? Yes. Is he going to be more open about the fun that he has? Yes. I was going to say, I wonder how much of it's jealousy, too. Oh, you know, it's, it's, come on, man. Well, dude, I mean, think of it, because this whole YouTube thing, the whole video games, mm-hmm. and just this whole culture really has only happened within the past Wait. 10 years. I mean, it started back in maybe 04, 05, yeah. 06, but to make it 
how it is now, man, it's been the only 10 years. And I'm sure people that are fans are just thinking to themselves, oh, if only I had that type oh, of opportunity. Yeah. I'm sure I'd be doing the same thing, but it doesn't come out that way. Mm-hmm. It comes out as, oh, you 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 can't be doing that. You, you can't be to doing that. You just focus on football. Yeah. So, I mean, that's probably it too. I, I think there's some older generations that yeah. look down on the younger generations. Maybe there's a tad bit of jealousy there. Mm-hmm. Just because they're able to do stuff that you, you weren't able to do. Yeah. But, but that's just, how it always is, though, man. You know that, man. The, the the next generation is always getting hated on, baby. But the another thing that I did like in the article that I think we haven't really discussed, it all hinges mainly, I think, upon Ben Roethlisberger's return. Because he said that. He said, man, if Ben is back to old Ben, then you definitely would assume that Juju's numbers do increase. So I think we, I mean, as we've talked about with the Steelers just this whole season in general, when you're predicting wins, when you're predicting what they can do and what they can't do, it all hinges on, okay, is Ben healthy? Is Ben available? What does Ben look like? That's the biggest thing when we're talking about Juju. Because if Ben isn't available, if Ben isn't back to old Ben, well, now it's just the same circle of, okay, well, who's the quarterback then if, if Ben's down or Ben isn't where he is? And now you're still going back to, okay, well, is Juju number one? Is he not a number one? Those things, I feel like, they do hold weight in the argument, but you can't solely put that on Juju either. And that was something that I think we need to be talking about as well. I mean, in terms of Big Ben, in terms of when he comes back, what does he look like? Is he back to old Ben? Because if he is, then I'm fully anticipating Juju being back to, like I said, old Juju. Mm, mm, got you. Yeah, that's a good point you bring up. Now, uh, the other thing I'm wondering, though, is we talked about this with I think it was Deontay where we it's like how how much of a leap does he really have to make how yeah. much of an impact do we really need from this player now we mentioned Juju and we both thought that Juju is going to have to have a little bit more of an impact than the other receivers right. but now that we brought in Claypool mm-hmm. I'm wondering I mean we're going to have four guys Ebron at tight end Vance yeah. McDonald at tight end we brought this dude in McFarlane he's going to be wearing Bell's number 26 uh, Benny Snow and James Con- like we have a lot of weapons on offense yeah. right now so in terms of how dire of an impact do we need from Juju is 900 yards I mean yeah. will that get it done with it like well then this is the thing that I think is going to be unique when we're trying to judge Juju season all things go well we got to look at it, man. James Washington and Deontay Johnson both put up really decent numbers for their position yeah. this year. You is don't it, think going to be... take another step forward? Like, right. I don't know if Juju dominates the yardage the way like AB was doing where you knew he was going to have 1,000 yards because I think, like you said, it's so many weapons. It's going to be so many mouths that are going to be getting fed between Deontay, between James Washington, between Claypool, between Ebron, between Vance, between the running back situation. Like, it's a lot of pieces, man. So... I it's hard for me to sit here and just think like, oh yeah, he's definitely going to get a thousand yards because I don't know if necessarily not the thousand yards because of ability, but more so just the opportunities associated mm-hmm. with it. And I think that's what I'm I'm trying to say is that or we shouldn't really knock Juju if he does get less than a thousand yards. Mm-hmm. Could, could the impact or what right. he needs to be doing, if it is 900 yards and he's catching every ball thrown his way, maybe he's distracting from other coverages. Mm-hmm. He's blocking, doing those I mean, type of we things. We saw that with ABs last year here, right? We saw, okay, the yardage was down, but touchdowns were up. Mm-hmm. But we also saw the impact that he was having directly and how it was helping out the other players on that team. If it's that type of impact for Juju, well, yeah, I don't think we hold the yardage against him. I think we we recognize that. And yeah, if we're wanting to, a lot of that's going to be pushed yeah, aside anyway. Absolutely. Hey, you know what they say? <laughs> he's sacrificing for the team. He's putting others first. <laughs> But when you're losing this, man, you're not doing enough. We need more from you. Yeah, come on, man. You know how it goes. <laughs> Steelers made the playoffs last year. We're not really getting on Juju season. That's what I mean. That Jets, that's what I mean about that Jets catch. If he catches that and we go on to win that game and we make the playoffs, totally different conversation. are we really knocking him that bad for last season? You're right. thinking, ah, oh, man, he came back and had that clutch yeah, catch. Yeah, and he did it with, with Duncan, I'm excited to see what happens like, next yeah. year. Yeah. That's what I mean. I, I that wonder. Was his first year without AB, he had this crazy situation. The quarterback play, coordinators, everything was going on, and he he found a way. He he gritted it out. <laughs> that's what that's what I mean. I wonder how much <laughs> we're really judging him off of those two bad plays last yeah. year, where the rest of the season it was it was like meh. I mean, there was some ups. The Dolphins catch, obviously right. the 49ers catch. He had some touch. He, had, you know, he had some nice plays here and there. But I, I really think it was those two things that, yeah. and then it started that whole narrative with the video. Yeah. Game. It was ridiculous. Yeah. It, it, 
it's completely absurd for I mean, one play to start that game whole game or man i thought the one time he was on stage i forgot who it was in pittsburgh they had a concert he's on stage and literally people were like oh yeah you don't care about football this was probably was it while he was injured too yeah, yeah okay uh-huh. yeah so i yeah. think it's all those things that are playing into it uh and it's unfortunate i mean come on man. you know you can't have a life outside of your profession bro yeah Okay. Hey, okay, bro. All you got to do is focus on your professional. Look, I don't want to see you going out. I don't want to see you playing any games. All you need to do is focus on media. That's okay. it. You can't go to you can't go to dinner. You can't enjoy music. No, 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 no. That's fun. You can't do that. All you got to do is focus on your job and your job only. All right. Understood. Twenty four seven. Understood. Seven days a week. <laughs> Three sixty five. That's it. Period. Understood, man. <laughs> Understood. I mean, if I want, if I want to get on AB or TB's level, that's, yeah, man, it's gonna have to happen. Period, bro. That's all you can do. Just focus. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't say Big Ben's level. Why you say TV? Hey, man, different strokes for different folks. Okay. Everyone's got their own thing. Just checking. I, I respect how Ben does his, his stuff, too. Okay. Just checking, bro. <laughs> but, I mean, TV and AB, they, we've, I'm more, it's I'm out there. And we've I'd talked rather about go to Big Ben put, route, man. I like that. Just being a goat. Just, just, saying, just like, natural ability. Just give me the juice. And just ball right, out. Man. You I like want, that, too. You, I took, want to you know, what, else, you know what? It's a combo. It's oh, now it's a, nah, it's a combo. Right. It's a combo. <laughs> Gotta have that ability, but it's also nice to put in Just some make sure you time. don't show up in here with a Tom Brady jersey. It'll be good, man. Nah, right. man I can't be doing yeah, that. Bro. Come on, man. Come you, on. You name dropping Brady before you go name drop Big Ben? Are you crazy? Nah, man, it ain't like that. Stop We've talked it. about this before. I nah. I am a fan of Brady. Like I like his. Nah, man. You, I like his nah. videos. I like his motivational nah, stuff. Man. Like that's that stuff's inspiring. Mm. I like that. The, the only quarterback I follow is BigBen7.com on Twitter. <laughs> that's it. Period. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, where's I, your loyalty at nah man it's there it's there it's just different way man i'm a, I'm a complex individual oh man it's kind of like this whole pirates thing man yeah, yeah it's all oh, god 